this is our Ask a Lawyer segment. And so, uh, you know, we got a lot of, um, what is it, legal sneaker stories to get into. And, you know, we can sit here and speculate all day, but I thought it was best to actually talk to a lawyer who actually knows what the hell they're talking about. A lot of the so, jargon posted is hard to make sense of or comprehend if you don't have a yep. background in law. That is. So what's up, John? How you doing? I'm doing good. Uh, first and foremost, gentlemen, thank you for having me again on the show. It's always a pleasure. You are a resident lawyer, so I mean, oh, thank you. And you're doing wonders for us right now. Yeah. Wink, wink. I always so. joke. Explain it. Explain <laughs> it to us as you would a child with what's going on. Okay. Uh, which uh, which topic do we want? So let's with? start off with. So we talked about the SEC and the uh, what was it? Uh, Under Armour. They um, they came to some type of agreement or whatever. Uh, basically, um, for lack of a better word, Under Armour was clicking the books to make it look like they were. Yeah. So doing uh, better than what they were. From my understanding, what was happening is uh, Under Armour had a bad quarter, and so there was some creative accounting from yeah. the accountants to make it look like the quarter was better than it was. Yep. Now, the problem is, uh, you know, it's, it's okay maybe to do that accounting method with pulling forward some sales for, you know, future sales. That's my understanding. Mm -hmm. But the fact of the matter is they misled investors to make it look like it was other reasons for the uh, revenue increase. And like the business was booming exactly. better than what it was. And so, you know, if I'm an investor, I'm looking at it and I'm saying, well, these are the metrics that I'm investing on and they're looking good right now. Uh, and I'm not seeing the fact that they did some creative accounting, then I might increase my position in that portfolio. And that is where they got in trouble. So basically, on the council, when white, well, well, I was going to say white people, rich people. Wow. Wow. <laughs> rich people. Wow. That's, that's, that's my initial reaction. Wow. I, calm down. I, I, I fixed You've it. You've said worse, but. I fixed it. I have it. said worse. <laughs> yeah. Like, calm down, everybody. But no, like, because that was my first reaction, because I was like, okay, so it's okay to cut the books as long as rich folk don't, like, get caught up in it. Well, as long as the rich people are taking advantage of the poor people. Yeah. Well, I think well, that's I the American think, government, I think, isn't it? I think, the, I, think well, I, think, I believe what he's saying. Am I being too cynical? I know, I mean, I know I'm being, I'm being, I'm being cynical. Saying, though, they, did, they didn't disclose that. Right, I know. I know what he means. Like, yeah, I'm just saying, that. like, but somebody, like, in my position, it was like, okay, wait a minute, like, okay. So well, the only reason this became a big issue is because investors got caught up. Well, well not even got caught up, because I don't think anybody got. Keep in mind that these investors are usually investing people's retirement funds. That's true. And so they have to be very per particular about what they're investing in, and they have certain criteria. So when they see a situation where maybe they have a loss and they can attribute it to this creative accounting mm -hmm. incident, then of course they're going to say, well, you know, let me let me sue these guys and get back that money because right. you know maybe for an average investor it could be a few thousand dollars but to a larger investor that could be millions, millions. of dollars yeah. so this it's, isn't moral or ethical God but was a it. law broken uh yeah they brought up I'd, ha I'd have to look at the specifics uh it does appear that they did violate some duty it was um, some act of 1938 or something that, that yeah. they referenced i don't know if i still have well, it what, I, well, what i was going to ask is Knowing that this is dealing with business and a publicly owned company, yes. Technically, is this something that could be a lot more common? For like, maybe you don't do it as much. Yes, Gino, this if, is very. If common. you oh, are a publicly listed company, you are under a lot more scrutiny than just a normal privately held company. Right. Uh, and so you're held to a lot higher standard, and the SEC is going to evaluate you. And if you make a representation that materially misleads investors, then you're going to get some some trouble. Yeah. Now I got a question for you too, because when I was reading over the when we first started reading over the case, it made it sound like the SEC and the Feds were both looking at them as if they were two different entities. And so the SEC are they not under the federal jurisdiction? Are they some type of SEC is a Security Exchange Commission? That is a part. That's a branch of the federal government. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, <laughs> Under Armour, like, cause at that time, too, because that's when they were hot. And I, th I think part of the motivation, they had, like, the streak that they were trying to maintain of, uh, I forgot wh how, how, what the percent of their revenue growth was. But they were trying to well, maintain the streak. they lied about it. Huh? They were lying about yeah, it. Yeah, they were lying about <laughs> it and stuff. And it was crazy because I remember at that time, too, everybody was like, oh, man, Under Armour's making some moves. I think they had got... Uh, um, they had some type of deal with uh, Dick Sporting Goods to 
you know, uh, do sell more shoes or I forgot what the exact uh, details are. But, you know, I remember it was like 2015-ish, 2016-ish, around that time where they, you know, were doing that. And, you know, I remember at the time thinking, like, okay, I'm not really making that move. And then you read this and it's like, oh, okay. And you know what? The short-term loss, they could have probably gotten over that a little bit better. But as soon as you put it in the framework of you intentionally defrauded investors, that makes it a lot worse. Uh, so I, I think they, the best thing to do is just be honest uh, because I think in the long run, you're not going to get away with this. There's so many eyeballs on this and so many interested parties. Yeah. So. Especially nowadays, like everybody's, the way that people dig into everything. Um, but I guess the reason I automatically went to you know, rich versus well, for the lack of a better word, poor is because the way, like basically the punishment, they only had to pay like $9 million, which sounds like a lot to us, but for them, I'm pretty sure they got insurance or whatever to kind of cover most of that. Well, and the risk benefit uh, ratio was, hey, you know, a $9 million fine, it's not that big. If we can get away with it, then, you know, what's, right. what's that? Because it's, it's probably talking about influencing the stock prices by a few hundred million or even a billion. Right. So, yeah, so that's I'm looking at the slap on the um, To me, it's a slap on the wrist, $9 million. And I think they were talking about going after the executives, but then once they agreed to cooperate, then all of that went away, and it was just like pay this fine, and that's it. Yeah, I mean, it takes years to litigate these things, even mm -hmm. if you're the SEC. So they are going to prefer to kind of give penalties and settle it very quickly and get their terms right away. And the companies usually don't want to deal with that. Um, they, you could win, but the amount of work that you have to go through to win those those lawsuits is is lost the time. Most of the time, not worth the emotional toll that it takes. And it's probably just cheaper just to pay the fine then. Much cheaper. Okay.